The spirit of Jezebel is alive and well today. Today we will talk about the unholy union of Jezebel and King Ahab. We will discover how the spirit creates chaos, divides the church, destroys marriages and relationships, and even destroys nations. Stick around because at the end of this video, we'll have a do I or anyone I know have the Jezebel spirit checklist. And if so, what can you do to be free of it? The Jezebel was one of the most infamous of all the female figures in the Bible. She's seen as the embodiment of feminine evil. Jezebel was a Cohesian princess whose ancestors were Canaanites. The Canaanites were started by Noah's youngest son, Canaan. Canaan was the young man that came in and saw his father Noah naked in his tent after he became drank, drunk, and then of course Noah cursed his name. You can read about that in Genesis 9, 20-25. The Bohesians worshipped a mixture of gods and goddesses, but the major one was Baal, the general term for Lord given to the head fertility and agricultural god of the Canaanites. The spirit of Jezebel is one that is a controlling spirit. It despises authority, especially that of man. It is sexually immoral, deceitful, murderous, and a lover of adultery. Jezebel was given in marriage to Ahab, the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. This marriage was more or less a political alliance that provided military protection and as well as lucrative trade routes to both peoples. Jezebel brings her pagan gods with her to Israel, and she persuades Ahab into tolerating her pagan worship. She hates the monotheistic worship of Yahweh. She uses her position as queen to foster the spread of Baal with its many gods, whose practices include ritual sex and temple prostitution. I want us to read 1 Kings 21 verses 1 through 10 so we can see the possessive and evil nature of Jezebel. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spake in Naboth saying, Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near unto my house and I will give thee it a better vineyard than it or if it seem good to thee I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him, for he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down upon his bed and turned his, away his face and would not eat bread. But Jezebel his wife came in to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake in the bath, the Jezreelite, and he said unto me, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders, to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men of Baal before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blasphemeth God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. This narrative clearly demonstrates that Jezebel is wicked and she has seized all power and authority away from Ahab. First, while he lays in bed pouting and refusing to eat, she demeans him by shaming him for taking no for an answer from a commoner, such as Naboth. She then goes on to tell him, since he isn't king enough or man enough to take that vineyard that he covets, she will do it for him. This is a Jezebel spirit that scorns all authority of man. 
In today's terms, she verbally spanked Ahab, and she basically tells him to man up. She then goes on to take control and insists he eats his bread like a mother is chastising her child. In other words, Jezebel's spirit is also a controlling spirit. She has Naboth murdered with false witness against him, while at the same time using a shroud of deception, masquerading herself to be King Habab himself. So we can see that the Jezebel spirit is a spirit of false witness and deception, and it's a murderous spirit. But this would not be the first murder she commits without touching the targeted victims. Although we aren't given a number in the scriptures, we are told that she had the prophets of Yahweh killed, so therefore the Jezebel spirit does not like a spiritual rival, but demands spiritual authority. Jezebel's direct orders to search out and kill the prophets of Yahweh stirs up the wrath of Elijah, and he goes to King Ahab. We read this in 1 Kings 17, verses 1 through 5. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall pass that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. We then see Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal to a final duel to prove who was the only true and living God. If you have your Bibles, turn to them at 1 King chapter 18, verses 20 through 40. And again, I'll be reading from the King James Version. So Ahab set up, sent it to all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long have y'all been between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then Elijah said unto the people, I even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call you on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. All And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself, and dress it first, for you are many. And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. There was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he is talking, or is he pursuing, or he's in a journey, or preadventure he sleepeth and must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass, when midday was, was past, that they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of Jacob, and to whom the word of the Lord come, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench under the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullocks into pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And, and he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it a third time. 
and the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. Now after all this took place, Jezebel was furious with Elijah and sent him a message. We find that message in 1 Kings chapter 1 and verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Jezebel's demand of the life of Elijah never materialized. He had been anointed by God and had found favor with him. Ahab later ends up being killed by a wayward arrow from an archer in a war with the Syrians. Ahab and Jezebel's two sons would rule Israel after the father was killed. The prophet Elisha anointed the next king of Israel to be Jehu, who personally slayed King Joram, who was the son of Jezebel and Ahab. When Jehu came to Samaria, he killed all who were left there of Ahab's family. He destroyed them according unto the word of the Lord spoken unto Elijah. This would also include killing the other 70 sons of Ahab so that the entire lineage was wiped out. Jezebel lived about 10 years after Ahab was killed in the battle. However, King Jehu would be the one responsible for her demise. Let's read exactly how it all ended for Jezebel in 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 30-36. through 36. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, tired her head, and looked out a window. And as Jehu entered into, at the gate, he said, Has the mere peace who slew this master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. And when it was come in, he did eat and drink and said, Go see now that this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more than of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hand. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. Earlier in our discussion, we've already noted that Jezebel spirit scorns all authority of man. The Jezebel spirit is also a controlling spirit. It is a spirit of false witness and deception. The Jezebel spirit is a murderous spirit, and the Jezebel spirit demands spiritual authority, and also it wants for political authority. The Jezebel spirit spawns sexual immorality. The Jezebel spirit is spreading the gospel of polytheism, but before we continue, we must address the elephant in the room that begs the question, has Satan duplicated God's hierarchy in heaven? We know for a fact that there is a hierarchy in heaven. The scriptures tell us that God has different angels in heaven who have different duties and functions. The scriptures bear witness to that. For example, Daniel was visited by Michael, who is described as one of the chief princes in Daniel 10 and 13. He also informs Daniel that he protects his people, so he is a protector. 
We know that Michael is also called an archangel in Jude chapter 1 and verse 9. We also read in Revelations 12 and 7, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Note that this verse says, His angels, which Michael led into battle. Gabriel appears in Scripture as a messenger of God. He appeared into the Virgin Mary to tell her that she was conceived of the Holy Spirit and that she would give birth to a male child and call his name Jesus. Gabriel also appears to Zacharias to tell him that Elizabeth would have a child. But Zacharias was doubtful of the thought of a newborn because of his and Elizabeth's age. Because he doubted Gabriel, he struck him dumb so that he could not be able to speak until that baby was born. There are several other examples that we could refer to in Scripture, but the truth that comes from them indicates angels of heaven had different tasks to perform, including continuous praise of God. Now, we, we can read in the New Testament that certain demons have certain roles or specific powers. We read in Mark chapter 3, 20 through 30, some of these demons can make people mute or blind them. On the other hand, we can read in Mark chapter 5, 1 through 20, some demons in Satan's ranks can, fall, can cause people they possess to hurt themselves. Whether Satan has a hierarchy or not, these evil demonic beings have different functions. On the other hand, the Jezebel spirit is more diabolical. It appears to have a calculation of things and traits of manipulation hatred, seduction, with an obsession and a hunger for power, and a less for both flesh and blood. This, um, this is a multifaceted demonic spirit. With all these traits fringed with deception, it makes this spirit superior to others in its ability to rip apart churches, marriages, kingdoms, and nations. Don't forget Jezebel had all these evil qualities and abilities. She was queen in the realm of both wicked things and carnal things. The spirit of Jezebel is a disposition or a demonic influence that causes rifts in the church and in marriage through cunning, deception, and seduction. It also can be the source of corruption and immorality that eventually brings nations to their knees or in some cases a complete downfall. We have read in the scriptures where Jezebel's spirits greatest enemy today would be, for example, in a discerning pastor or teacher, just like the prophet she murdered. Can you think about one church, perhaps even your own, where scandal has rocked the spiritual leaders of the flock? Jezebel sure did rock Elijah, causing him to flee. That spirit questions manhood and male authority. Have you seen this behavior in your church or on your job? It is a spirit of confusion with a sharp tongue that displays public humiliation. See that, any of that going on in our social platforms? The spirit of Jezebel is inclined to be outraged, just as Jezebel was when she got word that Elijah had slain all of her prophets of Baal. Do you think you've seen the spirit of Jezebel when it comes to behavior like road rage? The fact is that we could go on and on about the attributes of the spirit of Jezebel that is alive and well today, and it worked throughout the entire world. The spirit of Jezebel was one of Satan's most powerful demons that is at work 24-7. Do you see the Jezebel spirit reflected in people around you, or do you receive that spirit set within yourself? What do we do when we encounter a Jezebel spirit? Well, whether we encounter someone we think has a Jezebel spirit, or after an honest and truthful self-examination of ourselves, we think we have qualities that that cursed spirit could be in us, should do the following. First, if you've read the Old Testament at all, you know that when Israel was walking in favor of God, he was always with them in a ferocious way. If you don't know anything about spiritual warfare, then you're about to receive a crash course. You cannot be out of the will of God and expect this to work for you. If you would like to receive what I call the total GPS, which is Gospel Plan of Salvation, please come to our website at www.pathfinderministries.net and request the GPS of Jesus Christ because you really need it. 
If you're a child of God, then listen very carefully. This is priceless. Many Christians have sin in them or in their house, and they tend to be tossed about like rag dolls. We've all seen that happen. Maybe we've been victims of it. They're either are relenting and fighting against repentance, or they have brought something into their homes that is an abomination to the Lord. I believe we're going into troubled waters as the end continues to draw near. And learning how to properly plead the blood of Jesus for deliverance and protection is going to be needed by all Christians. The human race has been the playground for Satan and the forces of hell and all of its demonic spirits since the beginning of time. Human beings have been enslaved by choice by one or many of these forces and have chosen to live on the dark side. Therefore, we can come under attack by things both seen and unseen at any given time. Men have become so evil that we see young children in alarming numbers being taken from their homes and off the streets by human traffickers. Crimes of murder and forcible rape were up 5% more than a year ago. That 5% seems small, but the numbers are in the thousands as it applies to actual cases. So evil acts in each and every category are on the increase. So we may be rest assured of the fact that the Jezebel spirit lives. Let us read Revelations chapter 2, 18 through 23. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write the words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love and faith and service, and patient endurance, and your latter works exceed the first. But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I give her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her onto a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her I will throw into great tribulation, unless they repent of their works. And I will strike her children dead, and all the churches will know that I am He who searches mind and heart, and I will give to each of you according to your works. So yes, the spirit of Jezebel lives on in this present age, and the wicked and evil ways of mankind just gives it more power over more unexpecting people. So now let's proceed. First, we need to pray and unconditionally accept and surrender to the Lord. That's if we're Christians, we must ask him to give us a soul cleansing. So let's pray the prayer as follows. Dear Heavenly Father, I willingly am placing my body my spirit and my soul into your hands. I want to surrender all that I am and accept all that you want me to be. Please examine my heart, O oh God, and cleanse it. From this moment on, Father, I ask that you place me in your perfect will and your plan for my life. I will allow you to lead God and direct me, Father, according to your will. I will immerse my life and my thoughts that are in your word, the Holy Bible. This is my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it's time to go into spiritual warfare by claiming the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. And here is our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over every inch of my physical body, spirit, and soul, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I call out Satan, pleading the blood of Jesus over any and all demons, who are conspiring to come against me. O oh Lord, I pray that there will be no weapons formed against me that will prosper as I cover myself again with the blood of Jesus against any disease or illness that may come against me in the name of Jesus, Father God. I claim the victory through pleading the blood of Jesus over every demon that should try to come against me with various catastrophes and mayhem, Father God. Father, I pray in full faith that the same power that has saved us all and gave us the remission of sin so saves us now from the enemy and the lustful nature of the powers of darkness and spiritual weakness, Lord. I thank you for your protection in the blood of Jesus, Father God. 
as I plead it all in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The subject demons is very real. Don't doubt it exists. I have personally encountered them from the time I've been a young boy through my adult life. Matter of fact, some of those experiences are in my new book, Three in One, Unsolved Mysteries from Genesis to Revelation. Chapter 5, entitled Do Supernatural Hotspots Exist, is entirely dedicated to my personal experiences with the following subjects entitled Covered Section A, Encounters of Strange Occurrences, Section B, The Uninvited, Section C covers Mirror Apparition, Section D is entitled Night Moves and Noises. And that's just in Chapter 5. There's 20 chapters in which you can take a peek at the endless mysteries of the Bible. 